planet's final frontier, an inner world spoken about in myths and legends, but where few have dared to go. Beneath our feet are countless miles of cave shafts and passages. The Cave of Swallows in Mexico features a 400 meter free fall drop into what is currently the second deepest known pit in Mexico and the 11th deepest in the world. The temperature in the caves are low, vegetation grows thickly at the mouth, and the floor is covered with a thick layer of bat guano on which millipedes, insects, snakes, and scorpions live. But this is not the only subterranean world in the region. In the year 2000, the Cave of Crystals was discovered by miners excavating a tunnel for a mine in Mexico. The main chamber contains some of the largest natural crystals ever found in any underground cave. The largest one uh, so far measuring, I think, 36 feet in length. Uh, 13 feet in diameter and over 55 tons so just spectacular these amazingly huge crystals became so large because of the extreme extremely hot temperatures inside of the subterranean caves uh, it reaches a steamy 136 degrees Fahrenheit and this encourages microscopic crystals to form and you know rapidly grow much faster than we're used to seeing. Just gazing at these gigantic, beautiful crystals, one can't help but get carried away imagining what else awaits further exploration deeper inside these caves. The Hopi Indians maintain that their ancestors did not arrive from the north, nor by boat, but instead climbed onto the surface from the underworld. The specific place of emergence of the Hopi legend lies deep inside the Grand Canyon an enchanted opening from the mysterious recesses of the earth. Native American lore states that the Grand Canyon was formed as a result of a great deluge which had drowned uh, the previous third world. So. Hopi cosmology specifies that this canyon, the Grand Canyon, was the exact place from whence the Hopi emerged from their subterranean refuge after the flood had destroyed the previous age. There's several inner world entry points that are said to be located on their land in the canyon. One of them is a very revered and honored in ceremony as the dwelling of an ancient parent race. And this sacred site is strictly off limits to all but the Hopi people themselves. The lore further claims that the Hopi were assisted by a, a ant people who, who lived in the inner world, in the caves and caverns, and they're described by some as being, I guess you'd say, a pale humanoids with thin limbs, slightly arched backs. And 
the Smithsonian Institute may have actually discovered artifacts inside some massive caverns with intricate passages, rooms, um, you know, including tables with hieroglyphics. And there was actually an article published in the Arizona Gazette on April 5th, 1909. And it states that the Grand Canyon was once home to a lost civilization that consisted of people of gigantic proportions. So giants, basically. It also mentioned the discovery of an enormous underground citadel. And this was discovered by an explorer named G.E. Kincaid who came upon it while rafting on the Colorado River. The entrance to the city was at the end of a tunnel that allegedly stretched for almost a mile underground. So, could there still be civilizations that exist deep beneath the earth? If so, where are these entrances to these inner worlds and who lives there? Which races inhabit them? Just as Plato wrote about the mythical Atlantis, a continent which was said to be once located in the Atlantic, Herodotus wrote about the legendary Hyperborean continent, which he said once existed in the far north. Sneffeljokut is a 700,000 year old volcano with a glacier covering its summit in western Iceland. The mountain is one of the most famous sites of Iceland, primarily due to the journey of the center of the earth, uh, written by Jules Verne in 1864, in which the protagonists find the entrance to a passage leading to the inner earth. The main characters make their way through hazardous passages and survive the tortures of thirst to discover 88 miles down a vast sea. The protagonists construct a raft and sail across this mysterious subterranean ocean discovering a lost world of giant plants and prehistoric reptiles. Throughout, the character of the professor remains the model of a rational 19th century scientist as he tries to calculate how the subterranean lake came to be. Uh, he speculates the ocean had flowed down from the surface through a fissure which closed and some of the vapor had evaporated to cause clouds and storms. Some of the oldest cultures speak of civilizations inside of vast cavern cities within the bowels of the earth. Mythologies throughout the world from South America to the Arctic describe numerous entrances to these fabled inner kingdoms. Many occult organizations, esoteric authors, secret societies, they all concur with these myths and legends of subterranean inhabitants that are the remnants of antediluvian civilizations which sought refuge inside of these hollow caverns inside of the earth. Assuming that the myths are true, and the earth is at least partially hollow, how could life survive underground? How would organisms receive the ventilation required to breathe miles below the surface? What would provide the light needed to see? Are there any known sources of sustenance available that could provide for a large human population? My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist and now author, and I'd like to invite you to explore some of these mysteries with me in an attempt to unlock their riddles, which have eluded any serious consideration in mainstream academia. Species with Amnesia, Our Forgotten History, and Gods with Amnesia, Subterranean Worlds of Inner Earth. I appreciate all the positive feedback and I'd like to thank you for listening.